She's on three, Jenny's mother says. One, two, three. The camera snaps and Jenny giggles as we blink away the flash. Should we go? I ask, admiring Jenny's turquoise prom dress. Haven't you forgotten something? Jenny asks. I'm thinking, hotel room, limo, liquor, two cigarettes, box of condoms, the list completed by the mad scramble to find someone in the parking lot of the 7-Eleven to buy the leader of Franzia. I shrug and Jenny smiles, clears her throat, and touches a strap on her dress. Oh, I say, yeah, hold on. Jenny and her mother laugh as I jump down the hall to the kitchen to retrieve Jenny's corsage. She's on three, Jenny's mother says after my fumbling with the corsage, before Jenny recognizes that I accidentally bought a wrist corsage. The flash pops, waving Jenny and me into the final lap of our master plan, a night we've been planning since her mother agreed that Jenny could attend prom. So many late nights on the sectional in front of an unwatched movie ending in, let's wait. So many aborted gropes in the steamed up front seat of my car. The last of the day's sun colors a stripe of orange across Jenny's forehead as I shut the door for her, then skip around to the driver's side. I speed down the freeway toward the parking lot of the Marriott, where our limo awaits. Jenny knew her mother would add two and two if I picked her up in a limo, but I fought for the extravagance and persuaded Jenny to lie to her mother, something she'd never done. I still feel guilty, Jenny says. It's not too late to call off the limo, I say a little game we've been playing that up until now has given us some measure of power in the matter. We both know that power is gone now. I love you, Jenny says, not as a way to end the conversation or make it veer, but because it's just something we say. And lately, it's the only thing that comes out of my mouth that makes any sense to me. I love you too, I say. Slow down, Jenny says. We've got all of our lives, unless you kill us with your driving. She looks over at me and smiles, remembers my joke about how we're like old people, a sentiment echoed by our friends. And I almost don't look at the road again, caught by the way Jenny looks at me, which makes me feel loved, a look that makes me feel like I'm more than I know I really am. We exchange my car for the silver stretch in the Marriott parking lot. The chauffeur opens the door for us and we feel like royalty. I point out our hotel room through the moonroof as the limo glides out of the parking lot. A shiver runs through Jenny and she says, I can't wait. She slides her hand inside my purple paisley cumberman, teasing. Stepping through the gymnasium doors, our names ringing in our ears, is like stepping through a portal in time. The walls are papered black, and silver foil streamers float magically through the air, colliding now and again with the silver, white, and black helium balloons hammering away at the ceiling of the illuminated tent anchored in the middle of the floor. A slow song starts and I grab Jenny up, pressing her dangerously close, a violation surely to bring one of the chaperones. Jenny wriggles some space between us, and I spot Jason and his girlfriend, Sally, twirling under a silver banner. My head feels like one of those balloons, Jenny says. We sway in time to songs we've made out to many times before, the saccharine words carrying a tinge of weight on this particular night. Did I thank you for dinner, she asks. Yes, you did, I say. Well, thank you again. You're welcome again, I say, spinning her. Our forward progress stops and we twirl slowly in a circle, my rented shoes scuffing arcs in the polished floor. Are you ready to leave? Jenny asks. I don't know. Are you? A nervous excitement grips me. Earlier, in front of the mirror, there was still the limo to pick up, the hotel key to get, dinner, the dance itself. A song Jenny and I agree we don't like starts up and I say, I'm ready if you are. Think the limo is back? Jenny asks. I look at Jenny to see if she's stalling and see that she's looking back at me in the same way, to see if I'll use the excuse of waiting for the limo to put it off a little longer, which I almost do, reminiscing about the last dance, knowing that once we leave the gymnasium, the prom will be just a memory. But I don't want to send the wrong signal, so I say, I'll have a friend drop us off. It isn't until Jenny and I stumble out of Jason's car, the object of Jason and Sally's jokes all the way to the hotel, that we realize we weren't ready to leave. We realize it after we've opened the box of Franzia and kissed drunken kisses, doing everything we've done before just up and until. Our prom outfits laid out neatly, a stall we didn't recognize. Jenny comes back from the bathroom and we laugh at our naked selves, telling each other it's okay, that we've got all our lives.